Damn, eight cores, MacBook Pro 2019. They are out, it's official. And today we're gonna be giving you the shopper's buyer's guide for the professionals. Mac Woo! buyer guide. So let's first look at the newsroom page. We got new eight core machines and the Apple have said they are up to 200% faster than the 2017 MacBook Pros, not the 2018, calm down. <laughs> so all those people saying it's twice as fast. It's not, calm down, not that fast. We're gonna dive in, I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on. First, what I'm gonna show you is processors. All that's changed in this MacBook is the processor. All that's really changed. I mean, the stuff with keyboards and all that stuff, we'll get to that later. Now, processor I've got in this machine is a six core i7, the 2.2, the slow one. And as you can see over here, it's got nine megabytes of cache. The difference between the one I've got, the base one of last year's and the new base one is that the new base one still has six cores, but it's now got 12 megabytes of cache. Now that's the same amount of cache that was in the i9 from last year's edition. And the only reason why the i9 was performing a lot better than the i7s was because of its 12 megabytes cache. Crypto was an easy win for the i9. With three megabytes more L3 cache, it was able to hit three gigahertz mining around 200 hashes a second. So if you're doing heavy number operations, this is what you want an i9 for, as here it's getting a 66% boost in things like um, mining, that kind of stuff, so heavy CPU calculations. Take my money. However, this year's i9s, the good thing about them is they now have eight cores. So if we compare this year's i9, they got two editions. You got one that goes 2.3 gigahertz and you got another one that goes 2.4 gigahertz. The difference between these guys is they now go 16 megabytes of cache. So you should get a good chunky improvement in the kind of maths, heavy, intensive, scientific kind of calculations that you do if you want to mine to Bitcoin. That's where you get the improvement there and you get two additional cores. However, the problem with the new i9s from this year compared to last year's is they're actually slower. So last year's i9s, they went 2.9 gigahertz as their base clock speeds. This year's i9s, they go 2.3 and 2.4. So have they gotten faster for you? That's something you're gonna have to find out for yourself because it's very application dependent. Some applications will say, hey, Multiple cores, we're gonna help you out, we're gonna run really fast. Which other applications would utilize the faster speed better? Both last year's and this year's CPUs, they do turbo boost. The, uh, the speed is stabilized at 4.5, 4.56. 4 last year's i9 will go around four gigahertz when you're hitting one or two cores. However, this year's one, they also say it goes up to 4.8 or five gigahertz. Now officially, you can only hit five gigahertz if you're within less than 50 degrees Celsius. So if you put your MacBook Pro in the fridge, it's not gonna go that fast. It's actually gonna go between 4.6 to 4.8 when it's only using one or two cores. So you're not gonna get that speed. Most of the time it's gonna be hanging around the base clock speed of 2.3 instead of the base clock speed of 2.9. Now, what does this actually mean? Cause I'm throwing a lot of stats. What does that, this is what you wanna know. So I've got a couple of benchmarks here. Now I've read some benchmarks, these guys, notebook check, they're saying some figures that the i9 from this year is 60% faster than the i7 from last year, 60%. However, other benchmarks, they have said this year's i9 is only 2% faster than last year's i9. So you gotta find out exactly what the use case is. Now if you look at notebook check, what they've done is, they've done all their tests in Synbench. Synbench is a benchmarking application Okay, it's not a real world Photoshop kind of like Final Cut Pro use case application. So I'd say straight up, you're not gonna get 60% more speed. That's just a fact. Don't fall into that trap. You're more likely gonna get more towards this figure here over here. And what's even scary is last year's eighth generation is actually going faster by 8% than this year's because of course of that single core base speed. Now, I don't have these ninth generation CPUs on hand. I have seen some videos of them. I checked out Talio Tech, where he did a review of the six core ninth gen versus the six core eighth gen, and they ran pretty much about the same. So, maybe the update is to do with something a bit more, maybe security. However, there's a problem. The latest security issues that Intel have suffered from, look out, it says right there, process affected by MDS. The big exploit that's been in our computers for the last 10 years, allowing all these kind of dodgy people to hack all of our passwords. Guess what CPU still is affected by it? So it's right there, ninth generation CPUs. So you're gonna have to be disabling, hyper threading and all this kind of nonsense to get the faster speed. Okay, with that CPU nonsense out of the way, what else has changed? I gotta tell you, nothing. Check it out, nothing has changed. I'm going through the technical specs, I'm like shocked. I'm like, what, what's going on? It's, 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 it's the same. 
the, the 13 inch has one new CPU option, but it's still the eighth generation CPUs. They haven't boosted it to the ninth generation. There is no ninth generation CPUs for that model. The 15 incher, it's got ninth gen CPUs, except all you're getting is extra cash. Now, if you are using last year's model, and you're thinking of upgrading to this year's model, what I've noticed about with the Vega updates to the MacBook Pros is that they, their fans actually ramp up 10% faster. So you're gonna be getting a noisier Mac if you had one of the older models. Should you upgrade for that? Do you like fan noise? That's something that you need to consider for yourself. Personally, what I've done for my system is, I always have my MacBook raised, and I've now plugged in an eGPU with Vega 64 graphics. What that does is, it allows me to turn off the GPU inside my MacBook Pro, and purely just use the CPU, giving more thermal headroom for the CPU to go faster. And any GPU operations gets done on the eGPU. Of course, this won't be affected when I'm out and about and shaking it. However, when I'm in the office, <laughs> I'm able to um, get, get faster speeds and more headroom for the, the processor. All right, so this fan noise is gonna be more heavier than the 2017 and 2018. I was personally a bit disappointed that they haven't improved the graphics again, but I can't blame them because Navi hasn't been released yet. AMD have slated Navi to be released in the third quarter. So maybe there might be another MacBook Pro in a couple of months, like what they did with the Vega 20, might be coming out. We've heard rumors that there's a 16 inch coming out, maybe in WWDC next week or in two weeks time, they're gonna release that or they're gonna tell us about that one. Or maybe when Navi drops, that's when we're gonna get some sort of update. So if you are thinking of upgrading your Mac to the latest one, just be careful because there could be another MacBook Pro in a couple of months time. I'm warning you now, we got done with that crap last year. Buyers beware. I wish Apple would tell us a bit of more information, but they don't. Anyway, forget that. Nothing else has changed. The same GPU inside these Macs. Unfortunately, they haven't updated their Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi AX is now out, which is like faster than the current AC Wi-Fi. So you're still stuck with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi for these MacBook Pros. That's one of the improvements I was looking forward to because that's with the 9th gen Intels. That's what they were slating. Unfortunately, it doesn't have that. Still got a 720p FaceTime camera. 720p, my friggin' Samsung can do 4K. 720p, I've just, I've just locked it up. No one wants to use that. Nothing else has changed. The same weight, same size, same battery. Beautiful. But there has been one fix, potentially. Apple have now admitted that the 2018 MacBook Pros suck on their keyboards and they've included the 2018 as part of their refresh program to get their keyboards replaced for free. I've already had my keyboard replaced once and I'm gonna to need to have my keyboard replaced again because my end key has bust again. I don't know what I'm doing with the end key, it keeps on breaking. So what Apple have said, according to various outlets, they've said that some 2018 MacBook Pro keyboards will be replaced with the newest 2019 MacBook Pro keyboards. And what they've done with the newest 2019 MacBook Pro keyboards is that they've replaced the material to make it stronger. Bye now, bye now, bye now. Bye, 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 bye. The good thing about MacBook Pro 2019 is make sure you get Apple Care because you're gonna need it. It's gonna overheat, it's gonna break, you're gonna have some logic areas. <laughs> like finally, I just wanna go into the order experience just to let you guys know how to order these things. So you gotta, well, well firstly, you know, if you really wanna know how to order these things, you go into the, the Apple section, you click on Mac, you click on MacBook and you got 13 inch and 15 inch. Now these 13 inches, these two haven't been updated in like, the seventh generation CPUs, seventh generation there. So you want to avoid these guys like nonsense. This guy has got the eighth generation. However, the best one to get is right at the bottom here. Look, eighth generation right here. You got to select that and then you get to upgrade it. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure you get 16 gigabytes of memory and then give yourself a terabyte of storage because that's enough. I've got two terabyte in here and I'm already using all of it because I love it. You guys can get two terabytes too if you want to spend some money, but I recommend going between 512 to one terabyte, which is really cool over to the 15 inch MacBook Pro, this is what you wanna do. You wanna click on that 15 inch over here and you have two options. You've got the six core option with 555X graphics. Get that one if you're gonna be upgrading your Mac with an eGPU. That's what I've done and it works really well. However, if you want the fastest, the eighth core one, debatably fastest by the way, we're gonna find out. You can get two versions of the ninth generation processor. Both of them are eight cores. One goes 2.3 gigahertz, the other one goes 2.4 gigahertz. They have the same amount of cash, the same amount of thermals, all that kind of stuff. I'd probably stick with a 2.3 because that 100 gigahertz is not worth $200. I don't think so. It's probably gonna overheat and all this kind of nonsense, make your fans go crazy. The quieter one is probably best functionally for me. For you, if you like noise, one of you gamer peoples, go for it, spend your money. Why, why are you watching this video? Oh, because you're obsessed like me. It's good, I'm there. 
Now you want to get 32 gigabytes RAM because that's what I've got and RAM really helps with the caching. The more RAM you have, the more applications you can have in the memory, the less throttling you have between moving the memory between the hard drive and the memory itself. So 32 gigabytes RAM will help when you have loads of applications running at the same time. However, I've used a 16 gigabytes and it works really well. Two years ago, 16 gigabytes was the thing to get. So don't feel compelled to be getting 32 gigabytes, only get 32 gigabytes if, like me, you've tried at 16 gigabytes and you wanted a bit faster performance. For me, I'd say 32 gigabytes is amazing, I love it. Now over in the graphics option, you start off with 560X, you get Vega 16, Vega 20, unfortunately you still can order the 560X, they haven't made the Vega 16 the default option. I'd say at least get the Vega 16, it's only 250, or the Vega 20 is 350, 50, 350. Personally, if you're going to be getting an eGPU, the 560X is more than good enough because you can plug in the eGPU or turn off the dGPU and you'll have some good performance. I play games, all that kind of stuff. Good stuff. Final Cut Pro, everything is supported. Unreal Engine works really well with an eGPU. So if you really want to be clever, I'd probably not upgrade the graphics and just get yourself an eGPU. Next up is hard drive space. 512 is all right. However, I'd at least get a terabyte because these guys are non-upgradable. You can get external SSDs, but honestly, traveling around with an external SSD is a nightmare. So, it depends on your budget. Of course, these upgrades are very expensive. Like, 500 gigabytes is not worth that much money. It's not worth $400. $1,000 for two terabytes. $2,800 for four terabytes. Four terabytes is a bit overkill. Unless you've got the money, spend it. Enjoy yourself. And that's it. That's all the choices you can get. Again, no AX Wi-Fi, no nothing. Same sashes. Same case, so probably if you are one of the latest and greatest, maybe hold out, maybe there is that 16 inch coming at WWDC, maybe in a couple of months when Navi is out from AMD, maybe that guy is gonna get updated and he's gonna have the sexiest MacBook ever, the world's fastest, fastest MacBook. But overall, I gotta say, I've been using the 2018 MacBook Pro and I do actually love it. It's fast, it's sexy, it's sleek, it's beautiful. I started putting chips inside it because I've been taking it out and about. And I do like this system, whether I'd upgrade to the 2019 MacBook Pro. I am not convinced yet because there hasn't been any improvements. Between 2017 and 2018, there's been so many improvements. You had Bluetooth 5, you had better speakers, you had all these kind of 32 gigabytes RAM, you had the, you know, the, the L3 cache options with the i9s. With this one, all you're getting is just that CPU bump, alleviate some of the security issues, not really, get you more cores, more performance, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced on that, so we'll see what happens, how it drops. Anyway, that is that, that is the story of the 2019 MacBook Pro, look at that beauty, look at that, the world's fastest notebook ever, ever made, the best. So, will you guys be getting a 2019 MacBook Pro? Let me know in the comment section below, but for now, I gotta say, use his links below so he can keep me. Feel the power of the i9 2019 MacBook Pro, feel the power. <laughs>